Greetings, Norm Norlander here. Where we live in the Northwest, our primary fly fishing is for ocean-going rainbows, those are steelhead, and sea-run cutthroats, as well as salmon. Although these fish are not normally real active about feeding, they do respond to colorful attractor patterns that have some action. My lifelong friend and fishing companion, Ray Green, created this Hackleween streamer which over the years has accounted for a good many steelhead and cutthroat, as well as an occasional salmon. It's a very straightforward pattern, offers some bright contrasting colors and enticing movement of the angled hackle and the feather tip wings. I'm going to uh, show you how we create this little beauty. Here's the finished product. We're going to start with one of Alec Jackson's spay hooks. Pretty little rascals. This one is gold plated, which uh, adds a little sparkle to the operation. The thread that we're going to be using is uh, pretty straightforward. This is a 6 uh, uh black thread. Uh, you can use uh, various colors. I'm going to use the black because it'll show up a little bit as far as contrast goes. Now we're going to start out by what they call dressing the hook. That's where you basically attach the thread to the hook. And we're going to run this down a little bit. This creates a base for our body. We we'll get down to about the hackle, where excuse me, the uh, point of the hook, right about there. And we're going to roll in a half hitch. You don't really have to, but it's not a bad idea. Now, if you want to make your flies really durable, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little super glue on this thing, and that just glues everything to the hook, nice and solid like. A neat trick, uh, you don't want to touch this right now with your fingers, you're going to stick to it. However, if you take a tissue, Kleenex here, and use that as a blotter, that'll absorb the glue that's not cured. So you can touch this, you're not going to stick to the hook, and yet that thread is welded on there. Okay, we're going to create the back end of the body, we're going to lay our thread up over the thread post here. And we've got a couple different uh, dubbing materials, but well, actually, they're both Antron. Uh, the back end of the thing, we're going to make a nice bright yellow. Uh, you could use orange or other colors, but here's the deal. Just take a little Antron out of the bag. You start right here at the eye of the hook to catch a couple fibers like this. Give your vise a spin, and you can see how that pulls the dubbing onto your working thread. Now, very likely, you'd want to use a thread that's the same color as the dubbing, but you can see how well, even with a black thread, this dubbing will just cover right up. And then we're going to take and run this back and forth like so, get to the back here, back and forth a few times. This will build a much tougher body, okay? It looks about right. And again, you might want to roll in a half hitch, although I'm not sure it's terribly critical. Now the front half of this, we're going to use a bright Chinese red Antron. And again, you take it out of the bag. By the way, when you do this, pull it out like so. What that does, that gets most of the fibers going in one direction. And it's a lot easier to dub. It does a better job. And you see how that catches on there so easily? Just let it slip through your fingers like so. Okay. Now if you pinch the dubbing here at the end, right here, and the more you spin it, you'll just see that just draw tighter down onto the thread. Okay, same deal. Take this, run back and forth. About like so. Not too bad. And again, we'll roll in a half hitch. Now, the wings on this little beauty, we're going to use, a, this is a badger hackle. You can see that it's a fairly broad uh, tips on that for these uh, wings. I've pulled out a pair here that are about the same size. That's pretty important because you want these things to flare and, and be nice and even-like. So we're going to hold this in place like so and we'll separate this. You put one feather on either side of the hook. Pinch it up tight here. Take a soft loop and a couple nice hard firm wraps like so. And then at this point you can take and adjust these hackle tips so that they splay out nice and even-like. Yeah, we're getting pretty good there. Okay. Well, looks about right. Another couple firm wraps. And you might even roll in a half hitch. Okay. 
So those things, when they're in the water, they're going to breathe really nice. And I'm going to trim off the butt end of these things. Just bring your little pointy scissors down, hold it right against the hook, and you can clip that one off. Use the friction clamp. I turn the vise up so that I can lay my scissors in nice and tight and clip those off. Looks pretty good. Now the hackle itself, we're going to use the same feather and but here we're going to use a sweet spot that would be about a third of the way up so we'll strip this down and tie this in but leave just about a turn of bare stem that'll get our hackle started nice and straight like and we're going to secure that with a half hitch again little pointy scissors slide them up now a neat trick here to keep those wings from twisting on us. Again, you get your super glue out and give it just a little dab here, like so. But before you get to wrapping that, don't forget your tissue. Uh, that'll blot off all the wet glue, so now you can touch it and yet it's secure, it's not going to slip. I'm going to use some hackle pliers. By the way, you notice these hackle pliers, they've got a little piece of rubber uh, tubing on one end. Uh, it gives you a pretty good grip and it doesn't cut the hackle. Now we'll start at the back here and then do about four turns of hackle coming forward. That's sometimes referred to as cat skills style. And then bring your bobbin in like so. Lash it down nice and tight like that. And reach in here with your little pointy scissors again. And clip that hackle out. Okay, trick of the day, kids. A little piece of rubber tubing. Use that as a hackle guard. And that's going to push that hackle back so that now you can do a nice, neat whip finish. And uh, just a whole lot slicker this way. I've got a couple little barbs there I want to clip off. There's one there, and there's one there. Okay, now we're clean, ready to go. Another neat trick with these up eye hooks is take your fly and turn it upside down. So if you do a whip finish with your fingers, like I'm doing right here, it doesn't slip off the eye of the hook. Okay, there's a nice tidy whip finish. We put our hackle guard back on the bobbin. And you can see how those hackle fibers will lay down there nicely. It's pretty good. Oops. Only thing left is to go ahead and trim off your working thread. Like so, a little head cement, and we're good to go. It's a wonderful fly. I think you'll like it. It works really well.